Welcome to the third uh, Neftis dialogue about the Netters of ancient Egypt. Um, for me, this is the most practical system that the sages of all time uh, left us, the wisdom teaching of the Netters. It's a very, very practical system. And one of the ways, one of the principal ways that I came to understand it myself was as a parallel idea to the Sufi concept of the 99 names of Allah or of God. And if you don't know about that idea very basically, simply uh, in the Quran, which is a holy text, uh, God is often speaking and he describes himself by 99 different adjectives, you can say, that are qualities or attributes of his being. So there are ways to describe himself. So you would never mistake them for being God, because they're just qualities of God. So when I understood that idea, I thought, well, what if all these gods and goddesses of Egypt, what if that's a parallel idea? It's not the same idea, but what if it's a parallel idea? Let's walk down that street and see where it takes us. So instead of seeing them as gods and goddesses that are an end in themselves, what if they lead you to the one God, which is Ra? So this is how I came to... Mm, my, my big understanding of the netters. This is uh, really fascinating and I would love to hear your presentation about it as uh, myself traveling extensively in Egypt and being in touch with Islam and recently Sufism and also all the traditions and religions around the world Hmm, thank you. Well, um, as I say, the, putting these two ideas together helped my understanding tremendously. I'm not saying these are the same ideas. It, it's not the same concept. But if you look at it as a concept and look at the netters as a parallel concept, uh, it, it allows you to see things in a different way. And um, Sufism is a path of love. Um, in my video on the net of Ra, I explain how Ra is love. God is love. Allah is love. So Sufism is the path of, of God, or the path of Ra in ancient Egypt, or whatever name you want to call the Creator. And he created these netters. He created these hundreds, or we don't even know how many netters there are. This is how he created the universe. And in the Sufi idea of the 99 names, these qualities or attributes of God are all things that the human being has within himself or herself. So they're not uh, something abstract or philosophical. It's like every quality that he mentions that's part of God himself, you have it within you. Of course, his is greater and complete, and maybe in you it's very small or even dormant. But you have that quality or attribute, you have that possibility. And you can grow it, you can expand it if you wish. So for me this was a great way to, to look at the netters too, that 
the netters are these cosmic laws that exist outside of yourself, but they also exist within you. It's both within and without. Ah. Well, does this lead to what we often hear that our inner world reflects in the outer world, that the outer world is a reflection of what's happening inside? Yes. Exactly. And in an active way, because what you mentioned, yes, this is like an observation of, of how the universe is, how it works. But in an active way, what I learned about the netters is because these are the methods, the tools that Ra used to create the universe, and you have all these tools yourself in your own little toolbox, you can use those same rules, those same rules that God himself used to create your own reality, to create your own universe. So, he did the first move. He created the universe. It's complete, it's magnificent. It's, <laughs> it's so incredible. And you have the chance to create your own in any way you want. He's given you all the tools. That's what the netters are. It's a toolbox full of incredibly practical, wonderful tools. Wow. That sounds like we are already fit. Isn't that fun? <laughs> <laughs> and it sounds more than just a little toolbox. It sounds like a lorry or a few. <laughs> well, they're they're very intense, they're very condensed. Well, I imagine that like with any tool, uh, so it can be a mini tool and, and it can also be a micro tool. So it's, uh, as we grow, the application of these tools expands and grows with us. Would that be correct? Yes. And um, after a conversation the, uh, the other evening, I, uh, I received new information, new uh, downloads about, um, about invocation. Now, invocation is not a word we use very much now in the West. In fact, maybe some of you listening don't quite know what it means. What, what does it mean to invoke? You know, you've maybe heard about it in witchcraft or in some occult science, but it's not an everyday thing, you know, when you're having your coffee in the morning, you don't think about invoking. It, 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 it's not a word that comes. So you may not be familiar with it, but invocation is when you have a desire and you focus very intently on that desire and refine it exactly what is it that I desire and then you ask for it. You ask for the thing you desire. And this process, it is in fact a process, is the netta Isis. And this is why you see Isis in all the temples and in, <laughs> in so many different situations. You see her alone and you see her with other netters. Because she is the process of invocation. And this is why they say Isis is great of magic in the text. She is not magic. Magic is Hecla. This is another netter. But she's great of magic because she knows what she wants and she knows how to get what she wants. Mm. And that is the power of invocation. So whatever it is you want, if you can focus on that, what is your desire? Focus, 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 and then ask for it. That is invocation. Wow, so this really represents what some could see as supernatural power, and yet it's our utmost natural power, which we for sure can recall. It's these times in life when you really, really wanted something, 
and we just knew how to get it. Be it, you know, as a child, knowing how to get the sweets from the grandpa. <laughs> when there was a desire for a sweet, we just know how to, how to be very loving and, and, and very charming. Uh, or any other times when we really found a goal and we really kept being so focused when we just knew how to go for it, how to get it. Well, there are different kinds of desire and this can be how it works, but with invocation, once you focused on the desire specifically, you become active in asking for it. You have to make it manifest. You make manifest what it is you desire. If you want money, if you want a new lover, if you want a job, if you want a house, whatever it is that you want, you focus exactly on what that desire is and you make it manifest through your invocation. That is, you actively begin the process of that thing manifesting. This sounds like the ask and it's given. Exactly. Only that we must be focused, we must decide what it is we want, really focused, and ask for it. And this is the way to manifest. Yeah. What are you going to ask for? You have to know exactly. And this is the, the understanding I came to uh, the other day, uh, after, after we spoke, that uh, when you invoke, first of all you focus on your desire, what exactly is it I want. And I had an example connected with the 99 names of God. Like, suppose you are in a situation a delicate situation with friends or family and you're not quite sure how to handle it, you're not quite sure how to behave in this particular situation. So what you really need is wisdom. You need a little wisdom to handle this situation in the most beautiful, correct, harmonious way. So, one of the 99 names in Arabic is Al-Hakim, it's the wise one, or the quality of wisdom. So, what you would do is invoke wisdom in yourself. And when you invoke wisdom in yourself through the process of invocation, you activate that quality in yourself, you activate your own quality or property of wisdom and at the same time you activate or connect with the quality of wisdom in God at the same time. So you open a bridge or a, a, a connection between wisdom in you and wisdom in the entire universe and that allows that wisdom to flow to you for the specific subject you were dealing with, this situation with your friends or neighbors. And I thought, in a way, you know, it's like you sit there alone thinking, how am I going to deal with this situation? It needs delicate handling. I'm maybe not the most delicate person, so... <laughs> I need a little advice here. If I only could get on the net, you know, I could do, do a, use a search engine and find something. Well, when you invoke, that invocation is like giving you the password to the Wi-Fi. So when you invoke, suddenly you have the password, the Wi-Fi opens, and you're open to the entire net. All the wisdom that's available on the World Wide Web is suddenly available to you. Before it was just you sitting there thinking, how am I going to deal with this? Now you're connected. You can get all kinds of information you want. This is an analogy, but this is how it is when you, when you invoke wisdom in yourself and in God. You don't need the internet. 
You don't need to do a search engine. You just find it in yourself and you find it outside and you have a flow between you. You are connected. You are connected with God till you get the information you need and you can unplug. And you got to deal with this situation with your newfound wisdom. Oh, wow, oh my goodness. <laughs> this is this is exactly what the hypnosis and channeling opens up to us, I know from, from the experience. Where it's a dedicated time to ask for wisdom when there is a problem, then usually um, um, the, the tool of hypnosis helps to, to bring solutions to, to uh, many things. However, usually people, what I found, uh, seek to find solutions and it's usually when it really, really gets to something like the situation you described. When we face some obstacle or don't know how to deal with something, then we seek for a surge. And actually, this sounds like we have an engine inside of us, yeah. which we can just activate open in the invocation is just the key to connect. Therefore, uh, it represents uh, our human power, the power of the universe and the human quality, which we can connect with. Well, invocation means asking. So yes, it has to be, it has to be voiced aloud. You cannot invoke in silence. You have to ask. You have to really ask. But you have to first know what is it I'm asking for. Because if you go on the internet and uh, go into the search engine and just type wisdom, what are you going to get? You know, it will give you a dictionary definition of wisdom. You'll get quotes from famous philosophers. This won't help you deal with your situation at all. You have to be very specific. So, so as we get the wisdom as an umbrella of many things, when we ask for wisdom, then the wisdom can give us the micro keys. Mm -hmm. And don't forget too, in, in the last dialogue we were speaking about Seth and Neftis, and Neftis is specifically the wisdom of the heart. So, you know, there's a great wisdom of the mind, which is more philosophical, maybe even analytical. But the wisdom of the heart is Neftis. And she's always there. She's always there available. But you can be not listening. You can be saying, no, I'm not going to do that. We have to open ourselves up to the netters. We have to be open to the netters. And that's why, first of all, being open lets you hear their voice if they're calling. But if they're not calling and you do need help, you invoke. And they will come because they're there. They just didn't know you needed something. I didn't know you needed me. So yes, I need you now. So you invoke the matter. We spoke about wisdom, but you know, it could be the same thing. Maybe you need money. You have a situation and you, you need a certain amount of money, or uh, the cost of living went up and you just need uh, a greater income, period, ongoing. They're both very valid needs. So, for that you don't need wisdom, you would not invoke wisdom, because they wouldn't bring you the result. You need to apply to Al-Karim, uh, the kind, the generous, the one who's able to give, the one who's able to provide. Because if you need cash, you need to invoke the one who can provide the cash. You don't need to ask for wisdom. You're not asking for charity. You're not asking for love. These are all different matters. You need to know which one to ask. And then it can be given to you. So you're, you're quite right what Jesus said, ask and it shall be given. 
you have to know what to ask and who to ask. Because if you ask the banker for sausages, he don't have that. <laughs> and if you ask the butcher for a, a loan, he probably doesn't have that either. <laughs> this is the, the famous Sufi, uh, uh, very early Sufi, Rabbi al said, um, would you answer if I called you by the wrong name? I ask because for years I was calling God by the wrong name. It's a very big idea there. It is a truly big revelation. Would you answer if I called you by the wrong name? No. You wouldn't answer. But if I say, Monica, can you come over here? You will answer. You have to ask by the right name for what it is you want. So you have to have a familiarity with the netters who they are, what are their capacities, what, what can they, what are the services they offer? Well, this means that as there is so much giving, flowing from the natives, it's kind, just as an act of respect, to know those names. Yes. Because those names are so uh, generous those powers, forces, have those uh, abundance, capacity, as an abundance of wisdom, or all the physical manifestations like finance, cash, then it's very natural to approach them with respect, and as an act of respect, just to uh, be correct with the names. Yes. So there was this uh, part of that new revelation they got about invocation, and uh, man, several of the Sufi rituals, um, they, they rest heavily on invocation, and they, they are about invoking these specific qualities that we normally think of, yes, these are the attributes of God, but you have that in yourself. And so you're, uh, it's kind of like going to the gym and working out, you're building your muscles. If you want to be more kind, you have to keep invoking kindness. If you want to be more wise, you have to keep invoking wisdom. If you want to be more compassionate, you invoke compassion. So, it, it, it's knowing what you want, and these things are not necessarily external, they can be internal. You can want money, you can want compassion, you can want love, and maybe the way you experience love is through a partner. So you, you want an internal state, but you need an external manifestation to experience that state. Both are true. And this is why the netters, like I say with Isis, uh, she can work on her own, but she usually works with other netters. When you see her on the, on the wall of the temple, she's standing behind Osiris, or she's standing behind uh, Horus, or Thoth, or whoever, because she's invoking that quality. She's invoking their quality, so they're working together as a team, or sometimes there are three of them. Sometimes it's her and her sister Neftis, Isis and Neftis together. Actually, I had a few inspirations since our previous dialogue, uh, the, the first two series. So, from what you shared when we spoke about um, Elia, I see that Neftis, she's a guardian and a guard of love as uh, she's the intuition. And she's the intuition based on love and guiding towards love. 
which uh, made me think that it's such a beautiful um, insight or perhaps even a revelation mm. about how we can grow love and how intuition always uh, leads us towards love. Well, it is, she is the wisdom of the heart. And uh, the nature of the heart is to operate when it's working in harmony, it, it's all about love. So, because Neftis is your guide, she has to ultimately guide you towards love in one of its many, many forms. She, she guides you towards love. It's there for honoring the guidance of Neftis. Intuition means honoring the guidance of love. Yes. Yes, if you, if you want to put it that way, <laughs> yes. And um, coming back to this idea of invocation, um, that way you become the active force. You invoke what it is you want. So if there's a certain aspect of love that you want, and it doesn't necessarily mean another person, but it can be some other... Love has many, many aspects. You can invoke that aspect, which can come through Neftis, or through another netter, or a combination of them. So, by actively invoking, you're letting the universe know, this is what I want in my life right now. Ah, so I have a question here. Mm. <laughs> I'm very, very curious to know if it's simple or if it's more complex or if it's everything and or in between. So, with the power of invocation, which brings us close to manifesting, does it mean that manifestation can be very fast? Yeah, the, the, the time lapse that we experience, you know, it, it's because of the laws we're under, we are, uh, we can use these cosmic laws and we're also subject to them. And we didn't speak uh, in the earlier videos about the, some of the early laws that are mentioned in the Heliopolitan myth. For example, Shu and Tefnut, which are space and time respectively. So, after a tomb, which is the atom from which everything that we know of is made, um, he generated Shu and Tefnut. So, everything that follows the tomb is subject to time and space. Everything is subject to time and space. And time and space, that because they're twins, means you're also subject to duality. So we're under the law of duality and we're under the law of time and space. So to come back to your question about uh, you invoke what you want, how long will it take before it manifests? Well, you're under these two laws. You're under Shu and Tefnut. So you're under the laws of space and time. So uh, there are many variables. How big is the thing you want? How far are you from it? Or how close are you to it when you ask? Maybe you're almost there and you ask them. Or maybe you're very far away. So uh, there, there are many variables. The intensity of your desire is the, is the main, um, that's your main power tool. How focused you can make your desire and the intensity that you have it with. And that's why at the Sufi ritual, and you saw one the other day, um, the, the, the words that are spoken in the ritual are chanted are done with such intensity and with such intent that the invocation, it, it's, uh, it has to happen now. You make it happen now. 
and it's repeated again and again and again and again. And um, it may not be clearly visible at first, but that's what's part of what's happening at those uh, at those rituals. It's a very uh, concentrated, focused group invocation. So it's even multiplied than an individual invocation. I want this, but it's like we all want this now. And so the whole group focuses on one area and asks for it now. It's part of a, a ritual, you know. It's a, <laughs> it's a little different than what we can do on our own. But um, how long it will take to get what you want? As I say, there are variables. But keep asking and intensify your desire and your focus on exactly what it is you want. Well, thank you for being here tonight and uh, being part of this dialogue. And um, I hope it's helped to explain some things about the netters of ancient Egypt, the cosmic laws, and how we can reach out and use them. They're there to be used, they're available. Thank you, Monica, and uh, thank you all for watching. Thank you.